Welcome back boys and girls. It's time for another video. So I finally got myself motivated to get off the couch today on Saturday. It's like 4 p.m. now. Uh, I went to Costco today, so I was active today for something. But other than that, I've just kind of been sitting on the couch because we all need a couch day sometimes, okay? For real. But I'm up, I'm on my feet now. I'm forcing myself to get this car started. I'm running again. Maybe on the ground, but I'm not going to get too confident. Um, but regardless, one step closer to being back on track and like doing things and being cool. So we're getting close. Hydraulics is what we're focusing on today. There's a power steering line that needs to get hooked up. And then there is the oil return line from the engine back to the sump, which I'm finally going to rebuild today. And those two items will technically allow this car to start because I can fill it with the proper fluids and it can run again. And then there's basically nothing keeping it from being on the ground and driving around again. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, power steering. So if you watch my cross member video I just did about the PBM drift cave rack forward cross member, you'll remember that I couldn't hook my power steering line back up the high pressure side because it no longer clears the frame rail and the, the cross member and stuff. So I got a new power steering line made and it has a much more complex looking combinations of fittings here on this end, which will hopefully allow it to clear the cross member. It should. Um, I basically just kind of guesstimated at the kind of angles I need. So this should work. We're going to try to hook that, up, hook that up today. And then this, which is the whole reason that we put the car on jack stairs in the first place at like the beginning of March. This is the oil line that goes from the engine back to the sump in the back of the car here. This was running all of 2019. It's a nylon braided dash 16 AN line. And as you can see here, it got a little hot and melty. So it was like six inches from the exhaust. I didn't think it was that close, but evidently it was a little too close for comfort and the boy got a little hot. Here's another spot here. Here's another spot here. So just not really something we want to keep in the car. So. Robbie at We Don't Lift Racing hooked me up with some new stainless steel braided Dash 16 hose. So we're gonna make this line with the same fittings, just remake it on this hose and this should work much better. I already run the steel braided for the, whew, sorry. I haven't even done anything and I'm sweating. Like I'm drenched. Um, I already run this steel braided hose for the suction line from the sump to the engine because the suction can get so high that if you run the nylon, uh, it could actually collapse the hose, but for the return, it's pressure and not suction. So I figured the nylon was okay, but evidently heat is kind of an issue. So this stuff is what's going in. So we're gonna try to get these two hoses in the car today. That's kind of my goal. But first, let me show you some stuff that took place on the car off camera. Um, that's gonna help it get back, get back on the ground too. We got the coilovers back from Fortune Auto. So, I popped the coilovers back in. Here's one of the rears. We got the reservoirs extended from where I had them last year, so now I can mount them all up on the on the uh, C pillar bars here. Looking real cool in the glass house. So I just thought that was a neat place for my. Uh, so Fortune Auto was kind enough to extend these hoses for me, so I can reach and mount them up here. I think that looks pretty cool. The fronts back together. Got the coils back in two ways up front as well. And the reservoir is here. I also had the hoses extended. So you can see the hose comes off the bottom here. Did some P clamps on the frame rail so we keep it nice and tight away from the tire when it turns in. And then the reservoirs I got mounted up right up behind my headlights. I kind of figured that was a neat little tucked away place for him. Looks kind of cool. So, so that's done. So that's what's happened off camera. And now we're back on camera. So let's start doing things with hoses. So I don't know how many of the 13 of you watching have ever played with AN lines before, but just in case some of you haven't, I'm gonna show you kind of how these lines work. They're, they're super good because they can handle a lot of pressure. They're great, they're clean, they look nice, and you don't need any special tools to put them together. So these fittings, all of you have seen these fancy AN fittings and seen people brag about it before and stuff. They're two pieces. You got this sleeve here that the hose goes into, and then you've got this piece up here that threads into this metal sleeve. And as this piece threads into the metal sleeve, it will go inside the hose and kind of push it out against this metal sleeve. So 
I'm gonna show you visually here, because I have this end up in the vise. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and unscrew it, and then we'll see how this works. We'll unscrew both these fittings, cut the new line to match the length of the old one, put the fittings on the new line. And additionally, there's wrenches that go along with these AN lines. So you get these lines in different sizes. This happens to be a dash 16, which I think has a one inch diameter. Um, but anyway, it goes from a dash three, which is the smallest, all the way up to like dash 20. I don't know if their size is bigger than that, but dash 20 is the biggest that I've seen like readily available. And there's wrenches that go with this. So you can get yourself a nice AN wrench set. They come in all these pretty colors and you can see there's numbers on them. Here's the dash 20, 16, 12 and so on all the way down to three tiny you might use this for like brake lines so you just match the number of the wrench with the size line you're using the only size fittings are, are the same size that are going to fit in your line so you have a dash 16 line you can only have dash 16 fittings you can only use a dash 16 wrench really simple love everything an love it love it love it love it love it let's take this apart now Ideally, you want some soft grip vice clamps, soft jaw vices, I guess I should say, um, to work with these, because you don't want to scratch them up and stuff, make them all not super pretty. Um, like, okay, I get that, and, and I support that. Definitely on some of my lines that are more prominent that you see in the engine bay more, I really take more precautions. This one's gonna be under the car, and it already has a few dings and little nicks on scratches, and I don't have soft jaw vice grips available in my garage, so we're just clamping onto it with the metal ones. It's fine. Not the end of the world, but you see here, so, so you unscrew this out of that metal sleeve, the lower part of the fitting, and this is what comes out. So this here, how it tapers, goes inside the hose, and then as it screws in, it spreads the hose and pushes it out against this metal sleeve, and that's what creates that like pressure, uh, that's what makes it capable of holding the pressure. Really nice stuff. So once you unscrew that, there's nothing holding the tension against this outer sleeve, so you can just kind of pull the hose. So just, just kind of wiggle it back and forth a little bit. Nice and easy, work it on out. I'm sure this motion's gonna come up great in the video. Oh, there it is. So it is kind of one-time use. You can't really take a hose out put a different fitting on and, and use the same exact hose. Maybe you can get away with it, I don't know, but it, it, it does some damage when you, when you like clamp all this stuff down and, and build, the, uh, build the fitting. So this is what you're left with when you take the hose back out of one. All right, so that fitting's off. This hose is trash anyway, so screw it. We don't gotta worry about it. Now we'll put this, what is this, 130 degree fitting? in the vise, get it nice and tight, and repeat. There it is. This hose is officially free of hose ends and can now go in the garbage. Now we'll start prepping the new hose. This is where things can get a little more tedious and I'll show you why. All right, so the first thing you need to do is get the right length of new hose. So I just held the new hose up against the old one and I put um, some electrical tape around the point where I need to cut so that this length here is the same length. Um, so that brings me to the point of cutting this stuff. If you ask six different people how to properly cut AN hose, you might get five or six different answers. Personally, especially with the steel braided stuff, I have access to an angle grinder, this one right here. I like to just put some electrical tape around it and take the angle angle grinder and hold this in a vise and just, just zzz right through it. Um, the electrical tape is really important because you don't want this stuff to fray. So you see like here, this is just like a stock piece I got and you can see the edge of the stock piece, it's all, it's all frayed up. That won't want to go into the fitting that well because remember you got to put this, you got to put this sleeve down over the line so you can't have any frays sticking out the edge here. So the electrical tape it and then cut through it and then you peel the electrical tape off and it'll keep it from fraying. I already did it on this end. You can see here I made a cut off camera. So once I peel this electrical tape off, it won't pull and fray it. If you use duct tape, the adhesion might be too strong and it'll, it'll kind of pull the frays out as you take the duct tape off. So pro tip, um, now let's get to cutting this end and hopefully it'll come out good.
there it is. Now, when you cut it with an angle grinder like this, you get a lot of rubber dust and it can end up in the hose. And we don't want to con contaminate the fluids too much, even though before the oil flowing through this ever gets to the engine, it'll hit the oil filter and these particles will get filtered out anyways. Just try to be, be safe and get that out if you can. So what I do, paper towels, soak the paper towel in some water, and then you go, you just bunch it up and it's wet and you go in here just like a Q-tip, just like you do in your ear, and you just wipe it out. So we'll hit that up real quick. There it is. So that gets the majority of the stuff out, pretty much all of it. Uh, anything left in this hose's case, it's gonna hit the oil filter before it gets to the engine. Just just keep aware though, if you're put if you're doing a hose that the fluid is gonna go directly to whatever component it's it's being used in without being filtered first, you might want to really think how you're clearing the hose out. Alright, now we'll remove the electrical tape and I'll show you how it doesn't fray. So it just comes off nice and smooth. So it's gonna, I mean, it, it will bow out just a little bit. You just don't want like big frays hanging off and have this stuff all like unraveling. Now you take your sleeve, make sure that the tapered end is going down towards the, into the hose and you gotta just kind of get it all around to get all the hose inside and not let any frays stay outside of this. And you just get the hose in you pound it down until the hose hits the threaded section. Like you don't want it to go past it can't go past. Just try to get the hose close to the threaded section of this so it actuates as many ribs inside here as possible and keeps a good grip. All right, now you take the other end of your fitting and you gotta insert this down into the hose here so that the threaded, here, the threaded part of it here can start engaging the threads in the sleeve here. Now, Another pro tip, this, this causes a lot of force. These things are really tight. So there's a lot of friction and a lot of force being applied inside here. Always lube your tip. Lube the tip up, don't stick it in dry. It'll help it slide in a lot easier. You won't break a sweat. Once you get your threads engaged, you can grab your wrench and just spin it down. Spin it all the way down to the bottoms out. If you need, if you have an angled, uh, if you have an angled fitting and you need this to orientate a certain way, you can once you bottom it out, you can back it off just however much you need to spin this the direction you need, and you get a good sense for just how much force is being applied here because it gets pretty difficult to spin down pretty quickly. All right, there it is. That's one hose end. Back the vise out. There you go. That is a hose end. So we'll go ahead and we'll do the other end. I'm probably gonna do it off camera and then we'll start fishing this whole thing under the car and get it hooked back up to the sump. You know what this face means? This face means Andrew forgot something. What did Andrew forget? And you forgot the most important part, the whole reason we're doing this. Yeah, steel braided line won't melt like nylon, but there's still a heat issue. It's not gonna go away. <sighs> I got heat sleeve. It's not the cheap Velcro kind. You have to slide it over the hose before you put the hose ends on. I didn't slide it over the hose, so, okay. I'm gonna take one of the hose ends off, hopefully save the hose and it can be reused and slide this on. I'm losing daylight, man. We'll see, we'll see if we get all this in the car before it's dark. I still have hope. I think we can do it. Damn, this sucks. I always forget something. All right, this is good news, good news, good news. I took off the tip of the fitting, but I left the metal sleeve portion on the hose. And this, uh, this heat sleeve can stretch enough to go around it. So look, it looks like a snake that ate something. You can see the bulge in its belly. So I can slide this on without taking off this end. This is the end that if I took it off, I'd probably have to make a fresh cut in the hose because um, it's kind of destroyed the tip, I bet, inside of it. So, silver lining to some bad news. Now we can get this on. All right, back in the game. Check it out. Got it all heat sleeved. Beautiful. So we didn't waste that much time. I think it only took me like 10 minutes. So we're good. Now let's fish it in there. Let's see, this has to run from this port here 
where I have a cap on. So this is the port where the oil gets thrown back to the uh, back to the sump. The pump grabs it from the pan, throws it up through this port, and the hose is going to get it. And the hose is going to take it back under the under the car to the sump. So got to run it down in the abyss under the headers, keep it away from the heat, um, and yeah, and get back there. So also, also I don't know if you've noticed by now, but I'm sweating. I'm sweating like, like it looks like I just got out of the shower. It's 105 here, which isn't insane for Arizona. Some of my past videos I was doing in like 110 degree heat. <sighs> Maybe you noticed it then too, but like, I sweat a lot, dude. Like, it is wet. Like, I've seen a couple drops just drip past as I was doing some of the shots earlier, and I don't know if the camera gets it or not, but your boy is sweaty. We wet. All right, we got this line fish under the car. Not really the most fun job in the world, but it's done. So you can see the hose end here peeking out. This is 130 degree bend. And I have 130 so that I can go right from this port underneath the engine mount and like away from the header. Uh, very important. So we can just pop this cap off here. Protective cap. Now you can see into the abyss. Um, so I'll flip that hose end around and get it tightened down on that. Um, I'll tighten up the junction in the back where it goes. There's like a little subsection, a little like two foot section that goes from this from the sump to just in front of the rear diff, and that's where this hose meets. So there's a junction there. So I'll go tighten that up, tighten it up on the pump. This is done, and then we'll throw this power steering line on. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. This will be done super quick, at least for video time. Not as quick for me IRL, but. Oh, come on, man. So my sprinklers just came on. And uh, it looks like I might need a new sprinkler head. What the? What are you doing? All right, cool. One more thing to do. But anyways, um, besides Old Faithful of a sprinkler over there, you got the oil line all tight, as you can see here. And uh, it's tight back at the back of the car too. So now we can take this power steering line toss this baby in let's do it so here we got the power steering pump the line is going to come off of this dash six I believe it is uh, nipple right there I'm gonna run it between the block and the oil filter um, below the engine mount over the cross member I believe that's the route we take and then it'll end up hooking up to the steering rack right up there so let's throw that on Okay, so really good news down on this end, on the rack end. There's still an empty port. This one fits fine. I just gotta put this back on. It's the low pressure side. Uh, high pressure, so I, I told you I guessed on this hose, right? Because I don't have the tools to make these high pressure hoses in my garage, so I have to go to a hose store and I basically tell them what I need done and then they make the hose and I, I bring it home and it has to work. So I guessed really good down here because look at how this, look at how this just wraps so neat and tidy, right? right above the cross member good distance away from the exhaust so couldn't have done a better job right here like this oh my god it's just so satisfying to look at really happy with how that came out the problem is i get up let me get up here all right the problem it's not really a problem because all this stuff is going to work fine like it's okay i could have like i could do a lot better on this end where i have this like 30 degree let's see if i can get a good get a better angle in here so i have this 30 degree bend here and a little bit excess hose so like where i wish i had a tighter bend and it just went straight back between the block and the oil filter there um there's some there's some slack in the hose on this 30 degree so i have the hose come down and it goes it goes alongside in between the frame rail over the top of the oil filter and then down um between the cross member and the exhaust so it's just kind of it's a little bit tight like like this bend for a high pressure hose here is a little bit tight but it's okay it's, it's not like you know i can still move it with my fingers it's not like it's about to burst but we'll run it and we'll see if we notice any fatigue over time you know that's just that's just kind of what comes with like guessing when you have to have a hose bay going to the store and, and doing doing your best educated guess for angles of fittings length of hose stuff like that but I think we made it out okay. Um, to make that hose, it was about 68 bucks, something like that. 
So I'd rather not do it again if this works, uh, even though it's not like the most clean routing that you can have. So, but yeah, so that's, that's both hoses hooked up. We got the oil, we got the power steering. That's good to go. The sun is getting a little low. So I don't have a good vibe about rushing and filling the power steering fluid and putting the intake on and plugging in the, the uh, intake air temp and then like filling it with oil, changing the filter and like rushing to start this thing. Plus I have to put the radiator on and fill it with water. So I don't think we're gonna be starting it today. I'm really sorry, you know, that was still, that was still kind of fun. If you didn't know something about AN lines, now maybe you know how to put an AN, AN line together. You got to see my broken sprinkler head shooting gushing water like 20 feet in the air, so that's cool. Yeah, and we'll make another video shortly. I promise the next video I make about this car, we're gonna start it up, it's gonna be running, it's gonna sound badass, like, the works. So this is the last one where we start the video with a quiet car and end the video with a quiet car. So anyway, stay tuned, uh, be safe, hope you don't sweat as much as I do, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.